Hello there, and welcome to the office. You know what we need to work on? Our Nintendo Wii. That thing needs to be modded some more. The only problem is that the one I was working on, I no longer have. So I bought another one, and it's ready for us to continue mod videos. Yeah! So today, we're going to be learning how to install a few emulators. Let me start by saying if you're coming from part 2 of my Wii modding series, the file system is going to look a little different. There are two folders missing, the apps folder isn't there, but I'll be replacing it in the video. And the boot me folder is also not there, but we're not going to be using it anyway, so don't, don't worry about that. But, if you haven't watched part 2, or you haven't even modded your Wii yet, please go look at my Mod the Wii playlist so that you can start from the beginning. If you have come from part 1 or part 2 of this series, you're not going to need anything else aside from the SD card and the SD card reader that you've already been using. Alright, let's get started. First, starting off on your PC, navigate to the WeeBrew.org website. I have a link to that in the description. On the left side, go to the Applications page, and from there select the tab titled Emulators. Today we're going to be setting up three different emulators. We're going to want to download FCE Ultra GX for NES games, SNES 9X GX for Super Nintendo games, and lastly Visual Boy Advance GX for Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games. Click on the Download button on the right side for each emulator page. When it takes you to the next page, click on the zip file that's listed under Downloads. Once you've downloaded all three of the emulators, move them over to the root of your SD card. Inside of each zip file is an apps folder with an emulator and an additional folder for individual ROMs, save files, cheats, etc. Cut and paste both of these files to the root of your SD card for each emulator. Each zip file has an apps folder, but don't worry about overriding files or anything, they're all just going to merge together. Once everything has been cut and pasted, you should now have three additional folders on the root of your SD card, one for each emulator. And inside of your apps folder, you should see another three folders, each one with a boot.dol file in them. The last thing we're going to need is a few ROMs that we can load with the emulators. I'm not gonna tell you where to get those, but once you have them, place them on the root of your SD card. These three emulator folders we cut onto the root of the SD card have their own files for ROMs, however you can place your ROMs anywhere you want on your SD card. I myself prefer to make one single ROMs folder on the root of the card so I can manage them easier. I'm going to make individual folders inside of it for each system I have. I'm just going to be testing so I only picked one ROM for each system. If your ROMs are inside of zip folders, you don't have to extract them for the emulators. That's all we're going to be doing here, so let's go ahead and eject our SD card from the PC and insert it into the Wii system. Go ahead and load up the Homebrew channel next. As you can see, we now have all three emulators listed under the Homebrew channel. The reason I picked these three emulators is because they're all created by the same author, Tantric. They all work the same way, so once you understand how to use one of them, you're basically going to understand all three. Let's go ahead and load up SNES 9X GX to show you how to navigate it. When you first boot up any of these emulators, you'll start in the ROMs folder. As you can see, mine is empty because I chose to place all my ROMs in a separate file. To locate this file, all you're going to need to do is select the folder that reads up one level. If you keep selecting it, you'll eventually reach the root of your SD card. And there is my ROMs folder. I'm going to select it and then open up my Super Nintendo folder. But before we load a game, let's have a brief look at the settings. Each tab is going to give you a good amount of settings that you can adjust for the main menu of the emulator. Over in the Saving and Loading tab, you can see that my Load Folder option has recognized that my SNES ROMs are in a separate location and it's going to remember that. You can also change the location for your other files such as your save folders, screenshots, and so on. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and return to the main screen now and load up my game. Once I've booted it up, pressing the home button on the Wiimote will give me some more options to choose from. These options include creating, loading, and deleting save states, resetting the game ROM, and also additional settings for the game itself. The options here vary a bit, allowing you to change your controller type, remap buttons, take screenshots, adjust video settings, and also access game genie cheats if you have them downloaded. And that's going to cover the basic aspects of these three emulators. Like I said, they all function similarly to one another, but they all do look a little different. Aside from that though, you're pretty much covered when it comes to the three basic emulators. Of course, there are plenty of other emulators out there to look at, and we may take a look at them individually, but for now, let's continue to make our own Wii system better and better. If you liked this video, go ahead and click that thumbs up button, and please be sure to share and subscribe to the channel. This is Dr. Modelot. thank you for stopping by the office.